Today we're going to take a look at the Steam Deck OLED. Let's get to it. The Steam Deck OLED is an updated version of Valve's original Steam Deck. The flagship feature here is the new HDR OLED display. They've bumped up the size of the screen to 7.4 inches and upped the refresh rate to 90 hertz. A couple of items worth calling out. Valve snuck in a few extra goodies in this upgrade that you have to dig around their website to learn about. And learn we did. We chopped the list at their website down to what's changed from the LCD version of the deck, and this is one of the most impressive mid-gen console updates that we've ever seen. When you look at this list, it appears as if Valve has gone through and tweaked everything from top to bottom. Performance, efficiency, cooling, noise, battery life, weight, connections. So we're going to get to unboxing, set this thing up, take a tour of what's new, and find out if the Steam Deck OLED is worth upgrading to. First off, let's talk about the UBI. For folks who are unfamiliar with what a newbie is, it's the out-of-box experience you have from the time you take the device out of its packaging up to the point where you can actually use the device for its core purpose or for what it was advertised as. Shipping was as advertised, and much like the OG Steam Deck, the OLED showed up in similar packaging. Valve's attention to detail and efficient design philosophy can even be seen in their packaging decisions. And props to Valve for continuing to ship Steam Decks with these awesome cases. This is a minimum $30 add-on if this were any other company. You also get a charger and some instructions. Pretty straightforward. The UBI for the Steam Deck OLED is one of the best you're going to encounter in the full-size handheld space. It's second only to the UBI for the Nintendo Switch, and it's debatable as to whether or not setting up the Switch is actually a better experience. Powering up the deck walks you through a setup process designed for controller navigation, and it's very well done. There's only a handful of screens to interact with. After connecting to a Wi-Fi network, it'll pull down some updates, reboot a few times, and in about 10 minutes you'll be at the Steam Deck UI, ready to start downloading games. Other full-size handhelds really need to take note here. The user experience during the initial setup often sets a tone for how interacting with the device is going to be. This is a full-blown, proper desktop operating system underneath everything, yet the user interface and user experience have been completely optimized for the device we're using here. This is made with gamers in mind. It's night and day compared to setting up a Windows handheld. If you own an original Steam Deck, then the first impression with the Steam Deck OLED is essentially going to seem identical. It's not until you start to move around the device as you install and play games that you notice just how much has changed. Here's just a few things we noticed. The D-pad is a bit more firm all around, and pressing in any direction feels just a bit more definitive. The thumbsticks have a slight texture change, and now my thumb is able to stay on the stick just a bit better. The shoulder buttons are a tad less squishy and now have a nice click to them. The trackpads have haptics that feel more like a click and less like a buzz, similar to the feedback on a mouse wheel if you have one that clicks as you spin it. The volume buttons are far less mushy and now have a nice click to them. While the power button is still slightly recessed, there's now a much better click when pressed. My favorite button changes are to the Steam and Menu buttons. These were the mushiest buttons on the original Steam Deck and it was pretty difficult to tell when they were pressed. Here, there's a much better feedback click, even though they're still not raised any higher. The haptics in the controllers have been tweaked and now feel similar to the haptics found in a DualSense controller. The bezels are slightly smaller overall, and this has resulted in a slightly larger screen this time around. But it doesn't end with what you can see and touch. The fans aren't as loud as they were when they kick in now, and it doesn't get as warm overall either. Digging in a little deeper to the internals, they've added an extra Bluetooth antenna along with support for Bluetooth 5.3. And they've moved from dual band to tri-band Wi-Fi, adding 6 GHz support. They've upped the battery to 50 watt hours, which can now get you up to 12 hours of playtime. And somehow, all of this weighs 30 grams less than the original Steam Deck. I can't recall a mid-gen console refresh that has added as much as Valve has packed into this one. The software is largely the same though there's a little HDR indicator on the Steam Deck OLED to let you know when a game's running in HDR mode. It's worth calling out that moving around the UI on the OLED feels a bit smoother throughout. It's not something that you'll likely notice unless you jump back and forth between an OLED and an original Steam Deck. But it's worth mentioning because it's yet another thing that Valve improved upon when I had no idea it was something that would make the experience better. Yet, here we are, again. Otherwise, we're working with the same excellent user interface that's on the original, and it really is great. For the most part, you can 100% use your Steam Deck without ever having to leave this UI. 
There's some caveats like emulation and game pass to a browser, but those really are like a cherry on top of what you can do on the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck UI really is best in class out of the box compared to any other full size handheld. Much like other handhelds, there's a flyout menu that gives you access to things like performance, display, and controller settings. This makes it easy to fine tune games in real time. This is also where you'll check to see if games making use of HDR. The performance section in particular gives you access to a wide range of settings that are worthy of an entire deep dive video on their own. Even though Valve isn't technically pushing this in their advertising, games are a bit faster on the Steam Deck OLED. Channels like Digital Foundry and Linus Tech Tips found that in general, there was upwards of a 5-8% to performance increase from game to game. In our quick testing, we found this to pretty much be the case as well. Though unless you're watching the FPS counter, you might not actually notice it. So instead of doing a performance comparison, we're going to try to do a screen compare with the original Steam Deck. Trying to capture an HDR screen for comparison can be difficult, but we're hoping that you'll be able to tell the differences in depth of colors and lighting from the OLED to the OG in this section. We can't stress enough how what you see here on video isn't fully representative of how good the OLED screen looks. There's a lot of visual nuance from scene to scene and area to area within each game where the OLED screen really stands out, especially in games that use HDR. The dynamic range is a big step up here, and the blacks are much deeper. Something worth calling out here is that we've only had to turn on HDR in-game, and then it worked as advertised. You may or may not know what we mean here if you've ever tried to configure HDR on a Windows gaming PC. Windows has Auto HDR that's helped make it less of an issue there, but you're still just as likely to run into a scenario where you'll have to configure HDR on a game for Windows, and that's almost never fun. It can be time consuming, and often results in a few trips back to the desktop to mess with settings there as well. So it's refreshing to enable HDR here on the Steam Deck OLED and see it simply work as advertised. The larger battery in the OLED definitely helps extend our playtime over the original Steam Deck. But that's not the only reason why we're seeing longer battery life here. We're also seeing improvements due to the HDR screen using less power. And the move to a 6 nanometer APU has resulted in more efficient compute overall. In our AAA game testing, we left most games on medium settings on both decks, and we're getting just about an hour and 20 minutes on the original Steam Deck, and just over 2 hours on the OLED. On the other end of that spectrum, in lower end games and emulation where we could drop the TDP down to single digits, we saw almost 9 hours of playtime on the OLED, while we were only able to hit around 5 hours on the original Steam Deck, regardless of what we tried there. There's really not a lot to call out in the missing section for this one, especially on the hardware side. On the software side, the biggest thing missing is Linux support for gaming experiences outside the Steam Deck UI. That means no official support for things like the Epic Store or Game Pass. There's unofficial workarounds, and the community doing that work is pretty active, but it would be nice to see Epic and Microsoft compete here. It's still the same base power under the hood here. While the 5% performance boost over the OG Steam Deck is nice, this model is still going to struggle with some newer games as you turn up the graphics settings. It's Steam only if you're not willing to jump through some hoops and tinker around on the Linux desktop. Getting things like emulation or Game Pass up and running needs some manual work here and there that might appear too intimidating for some gamers. And for the most part, games that use Easy Anti-Cheat are still unplayable on SteamOS. Alright, so what are my final thoughts on the Steam Deck OLED? What Valve has done here is the opposite of a death by a thousand cuts. At first glance, the addition of an OLED screen seems interesting, but if you're coming from an original Steam Deck, you start to notice more quality of life updates as you move around the device. These updates add up, and if you're like us, you'll get to the point where recommending the Steam Deck OLED is a no-brainer. The minor performance boost isn't enough to recommend it over the original Steam Deck, but that in addition to the improvements in efficiency, cooling, noise, battery life, weight, connections, oh and the larger OLED HDR screen, all that roughly at the same price as the original models were on their launch day, make this an easy sell. If you're in the market for a new Steam Deck, the OLED is definitely the one to get. There's a lot to love here, but there are some things to consider. Maybe you're not already in the Steam ecosystem, and instead rely on something like Game Pass. Or you primarily play games that require easy anti-cheat, and the developers aren't updating their games to specifically work on the Steam Deck. Or you want to run a lot of emulation, but are intimidated by the Linux desktop experience. In cases like these, you might want to consider a Windows handheld. But what if you already own a Steam Deck? 
If you're a casual Steam Deck user, then it's definitely okay to skip this upgrade. There's a lot to like here, but a casual user might not notice much beyond the OLED display and battery life. But if you're someone who uses their current Steam Deck a lot, and travel and game on the go with it, then yes, in our opinion it's very much worth the upgrade, almost for the battery life alone. And it's this recommendation that speaks to what Valve has done here. The Steam Deck OLED almost comes across as a love letter to Steam Deck fans. It's packed with quality of life improvements that its biggest fans will definitely notice, but comes in at the same price as they did way back when they went on sale back in 2021. With the addition of the OLED, Valve now has a very competitive lineup to pick from. And this is where we find Valve's superpower. Most, if not all big players in the game industry, treat customer goodwill like a commodity. They build it up, only to spend it in ways that at times feel like they're trying to keep shareholders happy at the expense of gamers. From marketing gaffes, to questionable product direction, to moves that feel out of place in beloved fan favorite franchises, there's almost no end to how customer goodwill has been cashed in across the industry. But for the most part, Valve seems to only stockpile goodwill, and it's because of things like the Steam Deck OLED. It feels like there are PC gamers at Valve making things for PC gamers. The same can't be said of Sony and Microsoft, who feel as if they're exploring the entire PC space by way of committee. Valve's handheld was already a fan favorite, and the list of improvements to the OLED have secured its place there. It may not be the most powerful handheld on the market at this point going into 2024, but it's one of the best to have if Steam is your primary place to game. And that about wraps things up. Please like this video if you found it useful, and subscribe to our channel if you want more content like this. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this, and we'll chat again soon.